So this is Dan here at Blue Dog Farms, head cowologist, and today we're working on the new Holland L445 skid steer loader. It's just a little skid steer, but it's invaluable here on the farm, and uh, I, I, I miss being able to use it. And it's got two problems, and we're going to fix one of them today. It's a wheel seal on the right rear wheel that's leaking really bad. And it's making a mess. And running out on everything. I can't park it on any concrete because it'll drain oil out on it. And my my uh, hydraulic oil runs out and that stuff's kind of expensive. So I have the seal and I bought this seal uh, last time when I did the front one on the right side. And I also have a speedy sleeve and those of you that don't know what a speedy sleeve is, it's something you put on the inside of the uh, the seal surface if it's worn a groove in it so that you can uh, run the seal on a smooth surface again. Now last time I didn't need this but uh, I've got it here just in case the uh, huh, that's the goat in case the uh, the seal surface is um, is not good I can put this speedy sleeve on. So I've gone ahead and pressure washed it and it's kind of wet out today so I'm going to pull it into the barn I don't don't right now don't have a proper shop to pull it into but I'm going to pull it here in the barn near my tools out of the rain and we'll jack up one side and get started. Now the book says to, to pull out the, the fuel tank and uh, so you can better get at the, the, the inside chains and gears and I looked at that last time and decided not to do that and just uh, pulled the the spline out of the transmission or out of the, the case on the side that houses the chain and was able to with two people put it back together without pulling out the uh, fuel tank or draining the oil and we're going to attempt to do that again today because if I can avoid taking something apart I will usually. So let's get started. Okay, so here's the inside of the tire, or the wheel. It's obviously got a bunch of uh, oil buildup on it. And here's the hub. Got a bunch of stuff, and I pressure washed back behind it, but I couldn't get back down into there. So, now what I need to do is loosen the chain, and uh, pull the keeper out, and pull this hub out so I can change the uh, seal. So I just went and reread the manual that I have, the service manual for this machine, and indeed I do have to pull the fuel tank. So what that means is there's a belly plate underneath I'm going to have to crawl down and, and take off. Then I have to disconnect the, uh, the fuel gauge wire, fuel lines, the air breather lines, and the uh, fuel, fuel fill hose before I can let this down. I've never done this before on this machine so this will be new. But the reason I have to do this <clears throat> this time instead of the other time is there's a plate back in here. The, uh, the wheel is just right on the other side of this but there's a plate back in here behind the fuel tank that has to come off so I can get to the back side of the the uh, stub axle to take the nut off so it'll pull out. And I didn't have to do that last time because I was doing a front axle and the plate, the front axle is right there. 
So there's a similar plate like that back here beside that fuel tank that I have to get out. So here we go. So here's the belly pan. I'm fairly certain somebody's been in here since 1980 when this was built, but it hasn't been for a very long time. There's like four inches of stuff in here has <laughs> been built up over the years. So we'll have to get this cleaned up. It's got kind of a bend in it right here. If you can see it, there's a little bit of a bend in it right here. We'll try and straighten that out. There are a couple of bolts missing. That's why I believe somebody's been in here before. But it, it hasn't been for a while. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. So we'll keep going. Of course, I just pressure wash this so everything's full of water. That makes it fun. Oh, we'll take a look at it when uh, from the bottom. So there's the fuel tank. It's got years of crud built up on it. I have to clean that up a little bit, but it's important that I cover that hole up so I don't get any dirt down in it while I'm working on everything else. It's a plastic tank, so you got to be really careful with it. And besides that, it's a plastic tank that was made in 1980. So um, I don't know what it would take to find another one of these intact, but I don't want to find out. So I'm going to be very careful with this. So we're going to scoot this aside and uh, see if we can't find the plate that needs to be taken off. So why don't you come underneath here with me, and we'll take a look. Here it is. I don't know how well you can see, but here it is right here. A little too close. This is it right here. Here's a nut right there, or bolt. There's another one, there's two more up there. A bunch of crud on it needs to get scraped off first. And we'll get that off. We should be able to do our seals. Let's get going. So evidently I didn't have it jacked up far enough, tilted far enough. And this plate's a little bit different, but had a bunch of oil run out of the plate when I took it off. Fortunately, I had presence of mind to put a can underneath of it. Otherwise, that'd have been a big mess. Anyway, the plate's off, and I jacked it up even further so more of the oil would run to the other side, and I could not have oil running out of here, and I can get this, uh, get this hub out. I also, if you're working under something like this, don't just trust your bottle jack put in a block. Because if this were to fall down on me, it'd squish me flat. And uh, so I jacked it up some more and I, I'm continuing to add blocks so that it won't fall. Uh, so yeah, we'll uh, pull that tub of oil out and I should be able to get in there and 
take out the uh, take out the uh, the castle nut and pull out this uh, jack shaft and change out the seals should be pretty easy now so here's the plate there's the inside of the plate and the book actually says to use a silicone gasket I don't like silicone gaskets um, I prefer gasket material the the paper or even rubber or something cork even um, I prefer the paper but uh, the book says for these plates that they don't make a gasket for them um, I suppose I could make a gasket if I really wanted to but I think um, even though I don't like using it, I'll clean this up and I'll use some black e RTV or uh, see what I've got back there to seal this back up. Um, again, I don't like using the gasket, uh, the silicone gasket material, but I think that's what we're going to do today. we got it out get some light in here so there's, you see the bearing clear on the inside and I put a bolt against that sprocket so hopefully it wouldn't move but I see that it moved which means I'll just need help putting it back it's not a big deal and uh, the seals are here on the outside and there are two seals and I didn't recall this until I went back and read the book. And I have both of the seals, but the outside one is a dust seal and the inside one is an oil seal and they face opposite directions. Uh, the bearing race looks really good. Of course it runs in oil all the time, so should be fine. And uh, I'm going to pull these seals out and uh, put the new ones in. We, I've got to clean all this stuff up so I can put it back together clean and uh, I'll do that off camera and we'll be back putting this together shortly all right so I've got the parts cleaned up There's the bearings the washer castle nut There's the jack shaft with the hub now this is greasable there's a grease circ right there You're supposed to grease that daily. And that fills this groove here in with grease. And this is um, on the back sides of the seals. And if you keep this full of grease, it's supposed to keep the dirt away from the seals, which makes the seals wear out. Got my bolts and my little clips uh, washed up. This is a fitting from the fuel tank drain. And this is the uh, this is the plug, and it's a brass it's a brass plug, but it's got a threaded hole, so it's more like a brass bushing, and it's got an Allen head or an Allen socket um, little plug inside of it. But it's I don't know how well you can see it. It's really rusted and corroded in there, um, so I didn't even attempt to take it out. I just took the whole the whole little brass plug out. I'm not sure if I'm going to replace that while I'm doing it or not. I think you're supposed to take this out so you can put a, you know, two wrenches on it and not stress the plastic. And then it, it tightens up against this little collar like this. So I'll, I'll probably goober that up really good when I put it in so it doesn't, with uh, pipe dope, so it doesn't leak. Uh, here's the old seals. And this is one of the new ones. Now there's an inner and an outer. This is the inner. You can tell because it's got a spring back here inside the lip. And so this one goes in the end and it goes in this way with the lip facing in. And this is the outer dust seal. And the reason you can tell it's the outer dust seal is it doesn't have a little spring on the inside of the lip. It's just rubber, 
and so it goes in this way with the lip facing out. So I'll look around and see if I've got a socket that big. I think I do. And uh, we'll get these pressed in. And it's, it's important to remember to lubricate these. Um, so I always put, just get a little goo of grease on my finger and lubricate it and lubricate the, the shaft real well where it fits so that the seals are lubricated and they don't tear when you're putting it together. I also cleaned off the fuel tank and uh, just scraped off the top but I shined a flashlight inside and there's a bunch of gunk in the bottom so I did several rinses with a diesel and just poured the diesel in my used motor oil uh, bucket um, and got it. I got some paint. I'm not really sure where paint came from but there's a bunch of paint chips in there and, and I got those flushed out and a little bit of water and uh, she's a lot cleaner now. Um, I mean, you wouldn't want to take it to the dinner table, but <laughs> it's a lot cleaner on the inside. So I was inspecting this surface here where the seals run. And you can see a little bit of a mark there. Um, it, it's not grooved out, it's just polished. And there's another one down here where the dust seal rides. But I did notice a little, a couple little burrs between the two polished spaces. So I'm going to take some sandpaper and uh, just rub this just a little bit, take the little burrs off uh, before I assemble it and we'll be putting this back together soon. Another note is uh, mentioned that the uh, sprocket had fallen. You can't see the uh, can't see the hole of the sprocket. It, it's uh, moved out of the way so it just looks solid in there. And one of the reasons that my little stop bolt didn't hold is that I forgot to take the tension off the chain which is behind this uh, kinda almost triangle looking plate so I'll take that off and release all the tension off the chain before we get started here. Putting this uh, the stub shaft in, we push the uh, inner bearing into the reservoir because I wasn't pushing the sprocket up tight enough against to hold it in, and it, it just fell right out in the reservoir. So I've been looking to figure out how I can get that out. And there's another access panel up here, right above it. So I'm going to work at getting that taken out and see if. Uh, See if we can get that fished out. the issue. This bearing is supposed to slide down over this shaft, be snug but not not a press-on. And unfortunately it's a press-on and in the process of, of uh, getting it back off the shaft I kind of boogered up the splines a little bit and so I'm going to uh, dress up the splines with this little little die grinder, 
just very gently dress up the splines where I burgered it up with a punch, getting that bearing back off. And uh, then I'll uh, see if I can't take a file to any burrs that are on these splines that won't let that bearing come through. I may actually um, warm the bearing up a little bit to expand it so that it'll slide over a little better if that doesn't work because I don't want to take you know any any real material off this. I just, just get the burrs so it'll it'll slide back on. So anyway, here we go. Alright, so I've got them washed up, and I've got it so the bearing will be snug, but still go over the splines and the shaft. I've got Jareth with me, and we're going to uh, get it put back on. Got the uh, all the covers, oil covers back on with uh, RTV black, and just finger tight. I'll let those dry up for a while before I tighten them down and put oil back in it. But right now I'm going to tighten up the chain. So there are these four nuts that um, you tighten up to clamp down once you get it tight. But there's nuts that pull on here. If you can see that that shaft right there. Let me get a light. That threaded rod, you uh, it's got jam nuts that go on it, and that uh, pulls a uh, an idler uh, gear on the inside that that tightens the uh, the chain. And so the book says to have half to quarter inch play in your wheel. Now it's completely loose, so there's like four inches of play or six inches of play. So we're going to do that next. We'll get that. Uh, chain tightened up all right it's been about four hours and the silicone has had enough time to get uh, a little bit solid underneath those plates, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten them up and uh, get ready to put the fuel tank back on. I went and got some new fuel line to replace on the fuel tank because 
The old fuel line, though it was once rubber, has turned into carbon pipe. It's all hard and brittle. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that. I got new hydraulic filters. There's two of them. There's a charge filter and a main hydraulic filter. Um, I'm going to replace those. And, uh, but I'm going to do that after I fill it full of oil and run it. And hopefully any of the debris that I accidentally knocked into the oil reservoir will go into the old filters and then I'll change those um, after I run it for a little bit. So I'm going to tighten this uh, up and get ready to put in the uh, the fuel tank.
So I've got this back together, got the belly pin on, I got that guard on, you know, I just needed practice taking the tire on and off, I guess. But anyway, uh, that's all bolted back together. I had to adjust this, because we're supposed to have quarter inch movement between tires. So you hold one tire and you move the other one, it should move a quarter inch. independently although it seems a little tight so I'm thinking I'm going to loosen it up again uh, but the uh, I can take the jack down <clears throat> now I've got a problem and I put the tank back on down in there if you can really see fill spout so I can get a better shot. There. That fill spout is off of the tank. It just pushed the tube up on the uh, metal fill spout. And the problem with this skid steer is that it's really good access when you can open the back but you can't open the back unless you put the the boom up in the air and you can't put the boom up in the air unless it's running other than with some uh, scary uh, uh, lifting techniques with an excavator to, to manually put the boom up in the air I don't like doing it it's it's not fun the other thing you can do is take off that back piece without tape um, removing or lifting up the boom but it's it's like a three hour project because and, and it's just a few bolts but just maneuvering it out of there and the stuff that has to come off to get that off is ridiculous where if the boom's in the air it just opens up and hinges down uh, so I may try and put some diesel in it and hopefully not a lot will spill out <clears throat> and get it started so that I can raise the bucket up in the air and then fix it I think that's that's the way I'm going to go. But right now I got to loosen that back up. Now that I've got it all back together, yay! And uh, uh, see if I can make make a little more um, play in there. I think it's too tight. So we'll do that next, and then we'll we'll get it down off the blocks and see if we can uh, get it to uh, run. So, try out the skid steer. As you notice, there's a big puddle of oil where it was parked. Uh, I've got a significant hydraulic leak uh, down there somewhere. So, uh, I'm not really sure where. I'm taking the seat off so I can look and see if there's something leaking in there. And I don't see anything. Um, my best guess is that the inside plate I didn't get sealed properly or forgot to tighten up or something and it's leaking out of that plate so 
I'm going to jack it back up and take off that tire and the belly pan and take a look. Hopefully I don't have to pull the fuel tank again, but there's not a lot of fuel in it, so if I have to, it's, it's not as big a deal as it could be if it was clear full. So this time I've got the, uh, the boom up in the air. It's locked up with the factory, uh, factory locks so that if I do have to take the tank off, it's not a big deal to put back on like it was last time. So, unfortunately, sometimes you have to, to get back into stuff to fix it. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do something right or something else broke, who knows. But anyway, we'll get it uh, taken back up. I gotta jack it up, like I said, and, and uh, uh, take that tire off and take a look and. We'll uh, see what we can find. Well, I didn't forget to tighten the bolts. Uh, I could get on to three of the four of them and they're already tight. Cows are complaining for some reason. So I think what I'm going to do is start it up and see if I can't spot where it's leaking. Um, it's not real obvious. I'll probably poke around a little bit more before I start it up, but I think that's the next step is to start it up and uh, see if I can figure out where it's leaking. Crawl underneath of it one more time. All right, well, I took that inspection plate. It was right behind here. I took it off again and for some reason the top portion of the RTV black was missing. I think when the uh, oil would get sprayed in there from the return that it was coming out out the top of that plate. And so it would just come out when it was uh, running and not when it was just sitting. So anyway I put lots and lots of RTV on it this time to make sure the gap stuck on both sides and uh, went to the store and came back so it's been a couple couple three or four hours yeah, a couple three hours maybe um so i'll get that tightened up and uh hopefully this time it won't leak all right so i got the uh inspection plate cover all sealed up and tightened back up now I like to get this uh, fuel tank in tonight and then I won't take it down off the jack so in the morning and give that a good chance to set up. Hi Heathcliff, I'll oh, stop it, it's not good for you. Thank you. 
So, I finally got it put back together. I topped off the hydraulic oil. I greased the wheels. I even put air in the tires. Started it up and made sure that no uh, fluid was puking out anywhere. And I think we're ready to give it a test. So, I'm going to uh, run a little bit and let it warm up and make sure that there isn't any leaks that develop as it warms up because I need to haul it off to a job. And uh, one of the things that this does during the winter is it's a diesel powered wheelbarrow with a seat. So I'm going to haul some firewood down to the boiler and uh, use that time to test it out, let it warm up, see if it leaks. So let's get started. hydraulic oil running out of the, the bottom of it. Uh, seems to be running pretty well. It still has a couple of things to need to be fixed, but it's old, so it's to be expected. Um, handy little tool. Uh, I really miss it when I can't use it. I'm glad it's up and running again. I've got to take it to uh, another place where I'm clearing some fence line and put it to work here in the next uh, couple of days. So I'm glad, uh, glad that it's up and running. Um, you take care of your equipment, it'll take care of you. This is Dan of Blue Dog Farms, head cowologist and evidently chief mechanic. And you have a